I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and it's time for Interplanetary Social Justice Discourse. Last month, a team of Belgian astronomers discovered seven new exoplanets in orbit around a single sun. This discovery was later confirmed by NASA and became global news. The reason why it was such big news is that the seven planets are all roughly Earth-sized and seem to have a rocky surface, as opposed to being gaseous planets such as Uranus. Three of the planets are even within the star's habitable zone, meaning that they would have liquid water. Liquid water being one of the key components needed for life. Currently, the system is called TRAPPIST-1. That's Transiting Planets and Planetesimals Small Telescope named after an installation in Chile. The planets themselves are called TRAPPIST-1 A to D. And this is fine. If we're going to be researching planets, stars, and other celestial bodies, we need to have designations for them so that we can differentiate between them and not confuse ourselves. Obviously, we need to do this. But there has been a call to give them more personable names, like we've done with other planets such as Mars or Pluto. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson suggested naming them after the Seven Dwarves. And while we've named many, many planets and stars this way, they have all been planets that, as far as we know, are not inhabitable and are very unlikely to be supporting intelligent life right now. The problem with giving proper names to the planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system is that they may support intelligent life. And if so, that intelligent life may have their own names for those planets. Think about it like this. Say if we do, as Neil deGrasse Tyson suggested, name the seven planets after the seven dwarves. For the sake of argument, we'll say that the three planets that could support life are named Doc, Bashful, and Happy. We spend the years, if not decades, it would take to develop the technology to visit these planets, speculating on the nature of Dockian, Happian, and Bashfulian life. When we finally get there and discover intelligent life on, for the sake of argument, Bashful, or the Bashfulians are slightly more advanced than us, notice us noticing and come visit us, we'll have become used to referring to life on Bashful as Bashfully. But when we do co make contact, what if they take offense to being named after the concept of shyness? Or what if they don't like that we're not referring to them by the name they have for themselves? Or what if they think us having the goal to name another intelligent species is arrogant and patronizing? What if the plant what if the planet Bashful has three very similar looking but distinct species of intelligent life and they resent all being lumped under one name? This is, of course, the point where Daily Mail readers start screaming about political correctness gone mad. If you think this sounds far-fetched or paranoid, just look at the impact that certain words can have between certain human communities here on Earth. Ask indigenous Australian people how they feel about being called Aborigines. Ask Inuit people how they feel about being called Eskimos. Human beings, specifically white human beings such as myself, have a history of colonizing and subjugating new peoples that we encounter. And this is partially done through the language that we use. So as we prepare to engage in what might lead to contact with intelligent alien life, we need to be considering these things now. If we don't want to end up being seen as the asshole planet, we need to be considering what we can do to avoid space colonialism, including linguistic space colonialism. In fact, I would go so far as to say that if we have a choice over what human beings contact intelligent alien life first, we should be sending indigenous peoples from Earth. And I don't mean Earthlings as indigenous, I mean people like indigenous Australians, 
uh, First Nations Americans, Inuit, that kind of thing. People who have experienced colonialism firsthand, who continue to experience the effects of colonialism firsthand, and who will have, as a byproduct of their history and their present, a better and more intimate knowledge of what the problems of colonialism are and how to avoid them. On the one hand, I am delighted that our knowledge of the universe has expanded to the point where we need to be having discussions on the possibilities of space colonialism. On the other hand, I am horrified that our forethought and memories and, and empathy haven't developed to the point where discussions on space colonialism aren't, aren't necessary anymore. Oh well, it'll be grand, be grand. And really, naming the seven planets after the seven dwarves is handing the inevitable interplanetary xenophobes. And I mean xenophobe in the truest sense of the term right now. A pre-prepared set of racial or, I suppose, special stereotypes. That's not a good idea.